Hi great people, this is Classy Linshata, the home of entertainment matters, politics, relationship and trending news. Oh my god. Please, we are back like we never left. We are so much back here in this channel to give you the best content that you could ever find. So my great people, um, today I want to talk about how our brothers in the largest economy in Africa, brothers and sisters, in the largest economy in Africa, the country called Nigeria, are so much shocked by this one small country in East Africa called Kenya. Oh my God. Kenya and Nigeria are very important players in the African continent. However, Nigeria is three times, it's not even three times, four times in terms of population. Let's say more than four times larger than Nigeria, but than Kenya. But this Kenyan population that is almost approximately 50 million, the people there are very loud. Everybody can hear Kenyans talking from every corner of the continent. The sitting president can actually get out there and articulate issues around the African continent, like what he thinks needs to change, what Africa needs to do. He wants to do, to, he, the, the president is out there and is becoming the darling of everybody. That really alone is shocking Nigerians. They're they finding him quite ast astonishing. He's raising a lot of curiosity. Who is this guy, you know? So, that is something that has been very shocking to Nigerians. I remember five the, the the sitting president was the deputy president for 10 years and i remember in a conversation with some of our nigerian brothers and sisters and they were like oh my god your deputy president is always talking so our sitting president currently when he was the deputy president never kept quiet in fact he campaigned for five continuous years against his boss from 2017 to 2022 and he managed to sit back. That alone is very shocking because first and foremost, we knew Simba Joe as the deputy president of Nigeria. It's only when Mohamed Buhari was in London for medical checkups that actually people got to know he existed. He would of course attend things, events here and there, but he was not as outspoken as our deputy president in Kenya. So that alone shocks people, shocks Nigerians, because if you look around, you wouldn't really know who the deputy president of most countries in Africa is. Even the current sitting deputy president is also as talkative as the sitting president when he was the deputy president. That shocks Nigerians, you know. So now to seal it, Nigeria conducted their elections this year in February. They elected their own President Tinubu, who has already been sworn in, is already uh, started working. People have moved on. Like that politicization, sensitization, and whatever it is, people have accepted. They have moved on. They are just waiting for the next election to vote him out or fate to just play its course. That is Nigerian motto. They are not interested in going to the street to say, oh, you did not win, you did not win. They are not interested. Now, let's come to Kenya. Kenya conducted their own elections last year. In fact, by next month, we are going to have to be like one year down the line since the president was elected. However, people have been on the, in the streets. Of course, a, a lot of the protests, it all started like, okay, the opposition said, oh, because the Supreme Court have... have, have um, said the election was free and fair. It's okay they've accepted the decision, but they don't really accept that decision because we've seen them in the streets requesting for servers to be opened. So it is very shocking to Nigerians when they hear the word server op to be opened. It's as if it's a door that is supposed to be opened for everybody to see something that was kept. That is what some one some of my brothers and sisters were making fun of. But we know what Kenyans are asking for. The computer or the storage device or the, the server that stored all this information about the elections need to be audited. And this is because they believe, the opposition believes they won. 
but the sitting government also believes they won't actually the courts went a, a step further the supreme court went a step further to validate them however what is remaining is the validation from the people because people still have their own doubts oh my god that shocks nigerians that we are not moving on it, nigerians our nigerian brothers and sisters are still wondering why is it that we cannot accept and move on so they are shocked by this one loud east african country of course it is the gateway to the east and central economies in africa very important in the north of africa kenya has shocked many the courage and the ability to come out together you know another thing that has shocked K uh, nigeria so much is that when you call uh, when a politician calls, uh, it's a level of mobilization that politicians have mobilized Kenyans. Like when they call uh, people in the middle of the week, like on Tuesday or Monday, a lot of people turn up, especially the young people. And that explains a lot. It shocks them to see the amount of people, regardless of the fact that we are not saying that these type of problems don't exist in Nigeria, but it's the fact that a, a politician can mobilize so big crowds in the middle of the week and people will still turn up. And it is because Kenyans are so politically aware, they are so politically um, mobilized ethnically and all that, that the political system of the country, people are so much like interested in seeing the change. And now that I think alone is so shocking, not just to Nigerians, but also to the neighboring countries. It, if it is not fairly translated, it could be translated to be like Kenyans don't like peace. But that is not the issue. Kenyans love peace, but they want peace when it is covered with justice. That is what most Kenyans would tell you. So while it remains very misunderstood, a lot of people admire the media freedom. They admire the courage. They admire the president that is very outspoken and ready to speak. They admire so many things about Kenya. And it is so much shocking because the turns of political events and everything has really shaped Kenyans to be a very different set of people in that continent called Africa. So my people, I don't know what you think, but I just thought to cover this. And please stay tuned because I'm going to bring so many more videos like this. There is another video that will be coming up about what is it that is so different. What do, from a Nigerian perspective, what is it that Nigeria, Nigerians think is so different about the way Kenya, the historical past of Kenya and historical past of Nigeria. That's something that you need to really wait for it because like I said, politics or the political landscape of a country is literally shaped by the societal norms of that country. It is shaped by the governance structures of that country. It is so much, much shaped by the historical events of a country. I don't know what you, my people think, but please click the subscribe button below, like our video, leave us your comments. Let's know you guys what you think. Oh my God, let's continue staying in this channel. This is where you can get the best of the best of the content brain behind it oh my god thank you and see you in the next video bye bye